The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Everyone was getting pretty nervous a couple Sundays ago when it was raining all morning long, just like this, and there was no sign that the storm was ending. We had over 300 parishioners signed up for the Alleluia afternoon in the rectory backyard, and around noon I started getting texts, are we really doing this? Is there a rain date? Can we set up inside? Don't worry about it, I said. Everything will work out. And I knew that the weather forecast was calling for the rain to stop around 2 p.m., right around the time of the event. So I had great confidence. And uh, about 1.30, it was still raining. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine, I kept saying. Sure enough, about 20 minutes before the event was to begin, the rain stopped, the sun came out, the yard dried out, and we had a picture-perfect afternoon. You couldn't have asked for anything better. And uh, we enjoyed live music, food. There was a Eucharistic procession around the backyard. Oh, ye of little faith, I said to those who had texted. Why did you doubt? Do you not yet have faith? And secretly inside, I was saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) You know, my calmness that day was maybe hard won. Over 15 years of priesthood, I feel like I've seen it all. You probably think the same way. Ten years as a deacon, Deacon Eric. And, um, you know, I, I remember being in my last parish and Uh, We were celebrating the 100th anniversary of the church up in Twin Mountain, New Hampshire, and we had planned an outdoor mass in the cemetery, an outdoor procession down Route 3 to the church, and that day, the weather forecast was calling for 100% rain, but I said, well, gather in the cemetery anyways and see what happens, and I don't think I've ever seen clouds as dark and threatening as that day. They were there on the horizon the entire time, but you know what? It never rained a drop. A whole outdoor mass, the whole outdoor procession, only when we got inside the church did the heavens open up. And so God was very good. He waits to the last minute sometimes, but God is very good to us. And there are so many days like that we can think of in our life where we've trusted in the Lord and he's provided. Maybe not always provided exactly the way we expected or wanted, but God is good at providing for us. And when we place our trust in that, surprising things happen. Maybe that's what Joe Mazzula is thinking this week. He's the head coach of the Boston Celtics, and he just became the youngest coach in NBA history to win a championship. He's 35 years old. He's younger than some of his players. But he has this incredible calmness about him. Even though things have have been a real challenge, he took on the head coaching position of the Celtics at the beginning of last year in the midst of a real storm. The former coach had been fired because of a personal scandal. And there were all these questions around the team because they weren't living up to their potential. People thought they should break up the team. And, uh, and uh, he didn't have any experience. His only head coaching experience was at a Fairmount State, wherever that is, a Division II school. And yet he had this incredible calmness. He took on this great storm in his life with just beautiful faith. He has a very strong Catholic faith that he's very open about. And maybe his calmness comes from the fact that he uh, prays the rosary before every single game. In the arena, before the game, he does a rosary walk, and somebody gave him a wooden rosary that's made out of the 
famous parquet floor of the old Boston Garden. And so he uses that rosary before every game and he walks the arena, he looks up at the banners up in the rafters and he thinks about how far the team has come and how far it still needs to go. And that, that faith, that confidence, that calmness really rubbed off on the rest of the team. They played beautifully as a team this year. There was no ego and they, it was almost smooth sailing. They were the best team in the league all year long. And many people gave Joe Mazzulla the credit, but he wore a t-shirt in the post-game celebration that just said, but first, I need to thank God. We always need to thank God. He is the source of every blessing. He is the source of every grace. And the storm is going to come in our life for all of us. There are going to be times when it's going to feel like Jesus is asleep in the boat and he's not hearing our cries for help. And he seems to be asleep on a cushion while we are perishing. But then there will come a time when he seems to wake up and he says to us, O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Do you not yet have faith? Why are you terrified? After all we've been through, after all I've done, after this, this many years of this beautiful relationship we've been in, why are you still doubting? You've seen over and over again what I've done. Even the greatest saints have storms in their life, tremendous storms. Um, Less than a year after he arrived in the island of Molokai in Hawaii to take care of the lepers there, St. Damien experienced the worst storm of his life. It was this typhoon that came and hit the island, and it destroyed the 300 huts that the lepers lived in. They had next to nothing before, and now they literally had nothing. It was all destroyed. But that storm became something of a blessing in disguise. Because St. Damien put out an appeal and people uh, rallied from all over Hawaii and all over the world to care for the lepers. And they sent materials and they sent funds and they were able to build 300 new homes for the lepers that were much more livable than what they had before. And they built a hospital and they built a church and somebody donated a, be a bell. It all was shipped there to the island and the lepers themselves had to build their community, but they did it. And it was amazing what God provided. Then 150 years later, there was a young man from uh, Exeter, New Hampshire, Kyle. He went on vacation to Molokai, and he saw that the church that St. Damien had built all those years ago for the lepers were, was in disrepair. It would be badly in need of a paint job, and there was an infestation of bees in the church. And so he uh, rallied the troops again, and he was able to raise over $5,000 from our parish to uh, get, be sent there to the St. Damien's Parish in Molokai to help them out. They're still poor. They can't really help themselves. And we got this beautiful thank you note from St. Damien's Parish recently. And it said, you know, thank you. We, we were trusting in God. We didn't know what to do. And God provided for us through people from New Hampshire that we've never even met. We could give ourselves the credit, I guess, but first we always have to thank God. God is the one that provides these opportunities, and when we trust in him, when we are, try to share in his generous love, amazing things happen, things we would never expect, things that would go beyond our expectations, because he always knows the best plan, the best road ahead. He, he surprises us sometimes where he leads us. Sometimes the storm becomes the source of blessing. Sometimes the storm becomes the opportunity for us to put deeper faith in him. But the storm becomes that moment when we really have to decide, do we trust in the Lord? Sometimes the storms in our life, are those moments of storm are the moments that really define us. And so whatever storm is going on in our life right now, maybe it's an internal storm, maybe it's a storm that's raging all around us, let's take this opportunity to place deeper trust in the Lord Jesus, who is always there in the boat with us, to hear his voice saying to the storm, quiet, be still, and saying to us, why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith?